Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog. And today is our review of Venomized Number Two, which I have right here. Uh, and this is by Colin Bunn and Iban Coella, just like the last issue. And these are coming out weekly, so uh, we will do weekly reviews for each ep uh, for each issue, I should say. Uh, and we have the digital codes that we give away too. So, boom! Right there is a digital code. First person to put that code in gets the comic book. But don't worry if you don't win it this time. Uh, you know. Don't fret because we have a lot of codes giving uh, that I'm going to be giving away coming up. We have our 150th episode that will be coming up around May 5th, which is New Comic Book Day or Free Comic Book Day, I should say. And uh, and we're going to give out uh, probably 30 codes around then. I think I'll have hopefully collected 30 for Venom's 30th anniversary. I think I'll have collected 30 by then. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give away uh, codes from Venomized, uh, from uh, or from the Venom monthly books. Um, and then we also have codes that are like from all the Venomized covers. So right now they have like, you know, New Mutants had like a cover that had Venom on it. X-Men Blue and Gold had covers. So we're, I've been buying all those comics, saving all those digital codes, and we're going to give them all out in one episode. Um, so yeah, and then I also have, I think one, if not two full sets of Venomized, one through five, all five copies, because I'm buying, I bought uh, the, the uh, from Unknown Comics, I got the Mark Bagley variants that connect to each other, and then at Golden Apple, I've been buying the Bagley variants so I can have some now uh, to keep them in mint condition in case the ones that get mailed to me aren't, in, you know, somehow get damaged in shipping or whatever. Sometimes that happens, uh, but I mainly bought those to give out more digital code, so I may have up to two full sets of Venomized, and we're going to pick you know, specific people possibly in like a stream at some point uh, to give those away to. So I am back on Twitch. I went back today earlier and we played um, Sunset Overdrive and it's a game created by Insomnia Games and they're making the upcoming Spider-Man 4 game. And so we are playing that right now on my Twitch channel and it's now called the Venom Stream. Uh, so it used to be the Seek and Destroy Stream. Now it's the Venom Stream and we're going to probably record just one day a week for like an hour and a half. And then I'll split those up into like two or three 30 minute episodes and share them here on YouTube every week for those of you who can't be there live. Uh, but I'll probably edit them down. So if you want the full experience and you want to talk Venom stuff and be in the chat with me and ask me questions, that's definitely the place to go. And the link to my Twitch channels always are in the description do uh, box down below. Uh, so now that that Venom code is out of the way, let's talk briefly about Venomize number two. Um, this issue was okay. It wasn't a very strong issue, but it was mostly like an action issue. You know, now that they've kind of did the setup in the first issue, they're trying to, uh, you, know, you know, increase the stakes. They're, they're like, all right, we got to get a lot of poisons. We got to start mounting their army so that the last, you know, maybe two issues could, it shows that the heroes are really down and out of their luck and they have to rise up and fight against, you know, the poisons and, uh, and the, their numbers are many. So in this one, it's mostly, you know, increasing the ranks of the poison. Reasons. But there is some cool character moments in this issue as well. Um, you know, it starts off and has Venom. He's come back to Earth with the X-Men. The younger X-Men, they run into Magneto and Bloodstorm and Jimmy and, you know, and Spider-Man's there too. And Spider-Man and Venom are at each other's throats as they usually are. And Venom, uh, you know, and Magneto actually uses magnetic powers to force them together. And he's like, he's like, look, if you two don't calm down and stop biting at each other's throats, I'm going to squeeze you into one, one being, and you're going to live like that for the rest of your life. And so, uh, and then like one of the team members was like, wow, Magneto's methods are very effective. And uh, so, so Venom and Spider-Man are like, fine. All right, here's the deal. And Venom starts telling them what the story is and what's going on. And so they say, all right, let's come up with a plan. Let's go to Alchemex because something, if it's, if it's using symbiotes to try to get us, Let's use something that can fight back against Symbiote. So let's go to Alchemex. So they go to Alchemex, which is the company that is used later in Spider-Man 2099 comics, but has now been formed now. It used to be Oscorp, and now it's owned by Liz Allen, and she's running it. And in Venom Inc., you saw that she uh, kind of inadvertently created Agent uh, Anti-Venom uh, with Flash Thompson. And then she was also trying to help uh, Eddie, you know, deal with the symbiote and like the, the what it, what's doing to his brain. And it's kind of driving him crazy. And she's trying to help the symbiote become sane again. And they're trying to cure it, essentially, of its insanity uh, after being with so many hosts and stuff. So... You know, Liz, she's kind of plays a big part in this. They go to her and they're like, hey, we need help. And she's like, well, I only know one guy. If we're going to fight against symbiotes, I only know one guy to help us. So she calls in Agent Anti-Venom, Flash Thompson. And of course, when he shows up, Venom's like, no, 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 no. Hell no. Hell no, I'm not teaming up with this guy. And she's like, you have to. You have to do it. The fate of the world's here. And he's like, all right, fine. The fate of the world, fine, whatever. Uh, but it doesn't mean I'm going to like it. You know, so they're dealing with their thing there. Meanwhile, D-Man, uh, if my friend Gene is watching this, D-Man is in this comic book. Uh, he's a, a favorite of my friend Gene. Gene loves D-Man, but he's like a really obscure like character uh, from from Marvel Comics. And uh, I think Gene is his only fan. Uh, but uh, if anyone else out there likes D-Man or know who he is, you know, let me know in the comments below. 
But D-Man's there, and he's with this character from the 90s called Rage, which I thought was cool that they used him. And they're both on this bridge, and they're trying to keep the you know, civilians from freaking out. They're trying to get him to safety across the bridge. And then the poison show up, and then, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, Rage and, and D-Man have to fight them. But then they, of course, get infected with symbiotes, and then eventually turn into poisons uh, when other heroes try to show up to save them. And then that's when the other heroes notice and see what's going on. They're like, oh, crap. That's what's happening. They're, they're feeding us these symbiotes and they're tweaking them in ways that are making them immune to vibrations, as Spider-Man says. They're immune to like, you know, sound, fire and things like that so that they'll stay on their hosts uh, so that the, the poisons can easily turn them into poisons. Uh, so that's what happens to D-Man and Rage. Unfortunately, they become poisons. And right now the theory is that if you become a poison, you're dead. So Jean, everyone is pretty much at peace that Jean is probably dead and that they might not be able to get her back. But now all the other heroes are starting to turn too. And meanwhile, they cut to... Uh, um, Dr. Doom and Thanos again, and they're again talking to the queen. This time where we get mentioned that there's a higher entity in, in the poisons, one of the little creatures. There's like a queen hive mind thing there. And she again is projecting herself as Dr. Doom's mom. So Dr. Doom sees her as, as his mom, and then Thanos sees her as death. Uh, but so she changes form and she's like, look, how is the carnage thing going? They're like, yeah, we're trying to convert him. It looks like he's going to give in. He just needs a little bit more time. And then we need to find the other anomaly here. So they still don't know about Agent Anti-Venom, but they did learn about uh, Kid Kaiju. And I guess that's a character Colin Bunn created, and I don't really know too much about him or what his power set is. So I'm sure that'll come in, and you guys will probably let me know down in the comments below about Kid Kaiju. But apparently this kid is very uh, important to uh, being another anomaly against uh, the poisons here. So, uh, so the poisons are after him now. They're like, all right, we got carnage. We won't be caught off guard again so let's go find kid kaiju and i think that's all the things in this world that would challenge us but again they don't know about agent anti-venom so the heroes still have an ace in the hole uh, so they send a dispatch a team to go hunt down Kid Kaiju and they show up at his house on this little island and they knock on, it's like a terraformed island called Mu, uh, M-U, uh, which I guess stands for Marvel Universe. I don't know if it's a meta joke or whatever, but uh, the, the poisons go up and they go to the door and the door opens and Herbie, the Fantastic Four robot, comes out and he's like, hello, yes, I was told that you guys were going to come here and try to kill Kid Kaiju. So I've already uh, sent him away and I've been programmed to tell you to go F yourselves, you stupid wankers. <laughs> and the, and the thing the the poisons are like what and then uh then the building blows up trying to kill the um you know the poisons with them but unfortunately some of the poisons still live that you know they aren't damaged that that easily and uh and uh, elsa bloodstone or something like i think that's her name she's a hunter uh, she's a monster hunter and she shows up and she was actually in she's in damnation right now too and she's really cool she's like this female hunter like badass lady and uh so she shows up and she's like yep i already said i knew kid kaiju was going to be a problem for you guys i saw what was going on on the news and everything so i came here i mean i don't know it seems very convenient for me kind of a little bit lazy writing uh but whatever I mean, she's a hunter. She's the best at her game. She notices stuff when it happens. She can see patterns. And it's like, all right, I, maybe she figured this out. I don't know. But either way, she was responsible for sending Kid Kaiju away and gave him like a talisman to teleport him away to safety. So as far as she's concerned, he's long gone. And she stays behind to fight the poisons. Uh, and then meanwhile, we cut the Kid Kaiju and he goes against the plan, uses the tele, uh, the, the talisman to tele, uh, teleport himself right into New York City, right where all the danger is. And he finds himself right smack in the middle of all this craziness going on. And then as the, you know, Spider-Man and Agent Venom and, and Venom are all trying to figure out that plan. And as the poisons are, you know, taken down and fighting Elsa and then also taking down all the heroes on the bridge, uh, all hope seems to be lost when uh, once the other heroes show up, like Hercules and uh, and Thor, the mighty Thor, she shows up and uh, she gets hit with a poison and the book ends with her lashing out with all of her power all the lightning and the you know being turned into a poison so yeah not a lot of story story in this one it's more a little bit setups i guess to, for the payoffs of how the book's going to end with some of the threads like with the anomalies and stuff so this didn't have like this wasn't very story focused this was mostly action and luckily you know me i like Ivan's artwork i think his style is really neat it's different for venom which is why i like it. a lot of people are like oh i'm surprised you like his style like i thought you would like more like the the kelly jones or like the 90s stuff and it's like i love those i love a lot of those books i like when venom's drawn very realistic and you know very you know in, intense looking and very insane uh but i don't know there's something about this clean style of ebonds that i just gravitated to as soon as i read venom first that was my favorite thing about it was visually it was very appe appealing to me um and just from a design standpoint like I, I don't know i liked it and i've you know i you know me i used to draw a lot and with my aneurysm i haven't drawn so much lately but i like the look and, and style of things and i think it's a great, great contrast of what kind of character Venom is. And since this story is like a big over the top action adventure, kind of, you know, dumb movie blockbuster popcorn film, 
it makes sense to have a different, a more light style for it, uh, because you don't you don't want an artist who draws Venom very serious in tone and has him be a monster and has him be like scary looking, like Mike Diodato. Like you wouldn't have. I love his style, but you wouldn't probably have him draw Venom eyes and doing Venom versions of all the characters and still trying to keep it like a light popcorn film. I think that's how this was intentionally being marketed and driven and written. So I think it makes sense to have an artist that reflects that. So the art's working for me personally. I mean, if, I, if, that, if that explains it to you guys, because uh, some of you were like, oh, I like his art, but I don't know if I like it for Venom. And for me, it's working because it's a contrast um, to how you normally see Venom, but also the story is written in a contrasty way to where it's not like Colin Bunn's other work where he's like, you know, Flash Thompson Venom, where he was very serious and it was really well paced and very character driven. This is more of like, hey, we're doing a big, you know, popcorn summer flick. And and that's what he wanted to do with the character and that's what he's pulling off. So for me, I'm kind of taking it for what it is and that's why I'm digging it. But either way, the art to me works. Like I like the art a lot. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Have you read Venomized number two? If you haven't, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I'm sorry for the spoilers. If you, uh, you know, were hoping to, to not get any spoilers in this one, I'll try to go back in an editing, put like a spoiler warning at the beginning so that you guys could see it at the beginning. So uh, yes, this was very fun for me. I liked it. I'm going to probably give this issue though, probably like a, a three out of five. Um, it's almost a two and a half out of five stars, but I'm going to go with a three just because the art, I do like the artwork a lot. Um, but from a writing standpoint, this was more of like the you know, not as intense one, not as story focused one, more of the action issue. And the next one probably will too. So it'd probably be a similar rating for the next one, but we'll wait and see what the next issue delivers. But I want to know what you guys think. So based on what I said, what do you think down below? Do you have any questions? And if you have read it, let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.